Hello there everyone and welcome back. It's been a few days unfortunately but I'm itching to get the orcs back in action. And apparently there's going to be a big patch coming up that's going to change everything for this video series. Not to mention Dawn of War 3 itself because was it on Tuesday June 20th I believe they announced they're going to be introducing good old annihilation mode. Which basically means there's going to be no shield generators, no turrets there, everything's going to be as it was with Dawn of War 1 essentially. At least that's how it's going to look like, it remains to be seen how it'll actually play out until we get the patch. So, they're supposed to be introducing new doctrines, some turrets for Eldar and Space Marines for defensive purposes, so things are going to change drastically in the next few days and I am stoked for it. While I'm not too... well I don't really think negatively of the shield generating turrets there, they do feel odd, needless to say. Because they do give me an easy focal point there for defensive purposes and it does make it a little bit tricky for me to harass especially since I'm playing as orcs which lack jump jets and highly mobile characters really early on whereas Eldar have their teleportation the jump around but it's still well it's not even though the assault marines are probably like the best harassers early game at least with their jump jets as made apparent when I had to fight space marines before there with them jumping up on my, what is it, on Charon's rest there, having to deal with my dang uh, requisition points, so that will help and that will actually open up some uh, options for me, potentially. Although I'm going to have to get used to spraying up my units a lot more, I guess. And with boys, I should be okay with that, because they're really durable, they're really meaty, and they can do decent amount of damage, assuming I can get a good charge in with their shouts. And with the Mega Knobs like Better Shout Shield to allow them to soak damage, especially against like Dire Avengers or something that can cause them to overheat, I should be in good shape there. I just really need to get down and aware of all the knockbacks and disruption abilities like grenades and even the Assault Marine jumps there that could cancel that easily. So in the end I'm going to have to try and figure that out. And also... I don't know if that thump from the sky, that boy shout there is all that effective. It didn't seem all that effective. I'll have to play with it more for situations I don't need the speed boost. For, probably would do better for me because what are alternatives do I have for my boys? Because I do want to use my boys there. We have the speed increase, we have better shout, and thump from the sky. That's really it. So maybe if the speed increase is not really worth it. And it turns out this thing is a useless uh, doctrine. Maybe I can go more mid-game, late-game centric. Maybe upgrade my knobs even more. Or do I want to upgrade shooters? Hard to say because I'm not quite sure how I want to go with the mid-game as far as my support like backbone units. Because I, I know for a fact I'm going to go boys for like the melee units. And then a couple of knobs when I get three wog towers to kind of like be able to soak all the damage. And once I can get situated for a later game, I probably transition the knobs into Death Dreads. Depending on what he's feeling at that point. So I got my front line all figured out. It's, a, it's just a question, how do I want to go with my range units? Because Death Looters are amazing, but they require a lot of set of time. They're really immobile. And there doesn't seem to be a doctrine that allows them to ignore that. Kind of like how Devastators, I believe, have an elite doctrine. At least when the Elite is down, I think it may be one of the Knights, or at least the Dreadnought possibly, I'm not sure. That allows it to shoot and allow it to shoot without having to set up basically, allowing a lot more mobility. And we got Space Marines, so we may very well still have to deal with Assault Marine jumps and harassment. Especially since these bottom points here, top and bottom, are both susceptible to like getting harassed due to the fact that the turret can't quite protect those areas. Which is a little bit different from the Kendron port, the uh, the base, the small map there. Since uh, my really valuable points on a high ground, only assault marines can really get at that effectively, I think. I believe the turret can protect that. Actually, I'm probably wrong there considering... They have to get past the shield generator first to get that point, so maybe I'm wrong on that front. Either way, let's try and give our best here. Let's not fail horribly against the dang assault marines. So keep an eye on his doctrine, see what he's, what his strategy is. And I still wish I could figure out what his elite doctrines are. That would help 
tremendously figuring out what his game plan is. Because he's kind of hiding three wild cards on me there. And knowing my luck, he probably played this game enough to memorize what my doc elite doctrines are. Or at least what I could choose. So I think that's speed increase. Increase help on the listening post and then reduce cooldown on the banner. So pretty generic. A little bit of uh, early game momentum though. And again, I don't know what the elite doctrines are. I just know Gabrielle has like a drop pod one. That allows drop pods to heal while they're down in the area. He could be using it, he could not. I have no idea what the other one is. So I'm left wondering there, which gives him very easily a good advantage right there, just because of lack of knowledge on my front. Possibly. If I'm lucky, maybe he doesn't know what doctrines I'm fielding. Or he's just not considering it. That would be best case scenario for me. Alright. Boy's coming out. Gretchen's going. We're going to poke on down see where if he's down there or not. And if he's up top, we're going to have a lot of fighting without a doubt. Okay, drop pod. I hear that. So these attack on Marines. Shout. Ignore that one with the shield because I think that I can outlast that while I focus on this other one. Maybe. We'll see. I better not get too carried away, though. Let's not get too carried away. I just want to do damage. The listening post is being built. Now, can I kill that Servitor? Oh, I had to use the wrong boy squad. Go figure. Killing that Servitor would be nice. He can't build the listening post with that down. So that's going to help a bit. Come on, give me the right boy squad, you damn thing. Oh, I seriously won't let me. I thought that one boy I was clicking on was actually part of the weakened squad. Apparently not. I was completely wrong. Alright, he's reinforcing. I got a, I got the point down here. I'm getting a little bit distracted by this. So keep doing damage, and he does have scouts. Actually, we got scrap here now. Kill the listening post, keep on going. Get the power generator. Keep on building. I am getting distracted here, unfortunately, but with the scrap, this should help some. Do I have any more scrap? No, I don't, actually. Keep shouting, and I actually have improved boys, so this should go really well for me. Do I go for more shooters? Yeah, I should go for more shooters. I still got three boy squads. And hope they can contribute. Ignore the generators for now. Just keep shielding, keep tanking best I can. Because he is losing so much out of this. Now. Try and get a wog banner all set up. Shooter boys are going to contribute nicely. Actually, let me kill these generators. Maybe this is a mistake. Actually, yeah, it's pro I could say this is probably a mistake. But it's going well so far. Keep shouting, keep charging him. Try and get some kills. And he did cancel it for me there, so I, he got the money back there. But so far, going good. I gotta get my fall up ready, because I think this is gonna fall apart soon at some point. Unless I could kill this barracks, that would be nice. Just gotta keep in mind what has shouts available. This is going amazingly well. Even with his reinforcing, I just straight up outlasted him. And that scrap was kind of handy for the healing too. It's due to the fact he has no actual combat doctrines that helped him. Kind of like my better shout, so... This is probably over by the time that dies. Get the power generator going. Once that dies, I can use that for scrap. Yeah, just grab that for scrap. Come on, heal the boys. That would be amazing. Oh, he does have... He does have, like, extra squads, and the flamethrower is going to be annoying. But he can't reinforce. I thankfully killed that in time, but the flamethrower is going to be a ruin my day quite a bit.
Yeah, he may have given up already at this point. He hasn't just straight up conceded, but you never know. You never know. Let's just keep on going. Let's not get too carried away, because I still have wog banners to build. Yeah, he just let that die. Uh, as much as I like being aggressive, this doesn't really... I don't really like this for the purposes of the video, at least. Because it seems way too short to my liking, so... Let's try in our real one, hopefully, because... Hmm. Well, really, what can I learn from that there? I just overwhelmed him because he didn't have any assault marines, I think. And I did kill a servitor because that listening post alone would have caused issues. I did have a little bit of a problem trying to find my weakened squads there so I can at least get them out of melee to kind of keep them alive a little bit longer, but that I'm going to have to try and learn. Let's go for another real match. Well, this looks like it might be a rematch, so hopefully he puts up a bit more of a show, especially since it's a little bit different of a map. So, it remains to be seen. It remains to be seen how this plays out. I shouldn't get too cocky there, because he knows what I'm going to do, or at least he's going to assume I'm going to go with heavy boys, so he'll take that to a little more account, I think. Because he has the window to switch out his doctrines now. And this is the map where speed increase will actually be handy because of this massive gap. The distance that I have to travel between the top and bottom, even just to the middle and top and bottom because of this dang chasm in the between. Gonna make it a little bit awkward for me, so he has a lot more reason to go assault marines for this map just because of the convenience of jumping up and down these little openings. So, assault marines are more than likely gonna happen here. I think that's a fair assumption, or at least it's a better choice, I feel. And plus, he can fight off my boys relatively well. Just if I try and surround them and overwhelm them, most of my boys aren't even gonna get in melee for the most part. And he has the ability to disrupt my better shout too. But it looks like his doctrines have not changed at all, but that doesn't mean much for the elite doctrines that are, remain a mystery to me. Because I'm not sure which elite is it that gives his assault marines the charge assault. The extra little mobility dash that he has that gives them extra damage. Is it the Fenerable Dreadnought or is it like the Salt Terminators? I'm not sure. I honestly do not know. So. And of course, me trying to memorize all those doctrines is going to be a pain in the ass too. Because yeah, it does not say anything here, just just the description of the Elite itself. So that's no help. Let's see, that is speed increase. Yeah, improved health and reduced cooldown of the banner. So I kind of already knew that. I kind of already knew that those were the doctrines he had, but just to be sure, I knew what I was getting into. So, is he going to try the same thing and go for the middle? Probably the top, since he went for the top before, so it's possible he's building up there. And if he does, then I have the points down here to kind of equalize. And I forgot the resources, stupid me. Got a little bit distracted, I guess. Either way, that shouldn't deter me too terribly much. Now, can I attack this in any way? Attack that while preparing to defend top, because I'm pretty certain he's up above. I think we got to prepare for that eventuality. So two boys down here. I don't think I want to shout just in case. Seems like a good idea to kind of maximize my damage, but... I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's worth it just for a little bit extra damage. Okay, now that he's committed to this, I can actually engage. Okay, ignore the one with the shield. Oh, damn it! I ruined my shout just because of that banner. So he's got a nice vantage point here. That may have just ruined things for me a tiny bit. Especially now he has shields for both his boys. Actually, I could just get inside the shield. That would work well. Get inside the shield and just soak. Just stall. 
because he needs to melee me if he wants to get in. Can I just tell these guys to stop? Okay, there we go. We get ourselves a t we get ourselves a little bit of nice defenses here. The shield will make me completely impervious to damage, and that shield generator is going to die. So, perfectly fair trade. And I get myself a drop pod, although that was still poorly executed. I'm not going to lie. It's just him neglecting his own ability. That's him more neglecting what he could be doing than more me executing properly. And I didn't have any points on there, so get on up there. Get some boys, get some shooters. And get everyone ready to... Because I haven't even built anything over there, so I'm kind of okay with that. Now get a listening post right down here. And if possible, just take this back. Okay. That's fine. I could just back door, and now I have Storm Boys available. Probably not the most effective, but at least I get some damage in. Okay, more Shooter Boys. I like it. I got Heavy Boys to stun him. Although, he's going back to his defenses, so this works really well. Just gotta get my power generators up and start utilizing that. Also, dude, where's my other Gretchen? Because I need some walk banners too. So he's dropping something else there. I'm not sure what he's dropping though. I heard it regardless, whatever it was. So elite point generator, let's try and capitalize on all, all this extra juicy elite points. And can I... I would love to go for his uh, other shield generator, but don't know if it's worth it. I wonder what. Oh, there. Oh, that was his uh, elite gen. That was his uh, death watch. Okay, that works out well. I don't have the convenience of positioning though. Just jump on in. He does have devastators, so. Oh, I hope that didn't mess up my suicide. Yes, it did. Damn it. That little pole. That goddamn pole just ruined the things for me quite heavily. Now, let's hurt these Death Watch squad. If he's going to lose something, let it be the Death Watch. The kill team. There. That was worth it. And I lost my Gretchens. Yeah, I lost my Gretchens. So, second listening post up top. He's shown that he's going to commit... Actually, I need to repair this, don't I? So, it's a little risky to commit. Damn it! Well, clearly he does not know how to deal with orcs, I guess. Well, two nice, complete stomps, I gotta say. Not exactly the matches I would like. Although, at least this one was a little bit better. It's just him neglecting his shield generator. Because apparently one damn boy squad just stopped his attack cold. Completely. I just sat them in there. Don't even try to attack. If he wanted to, he could have just set his tactical marines to come in and melee. Which is kind of giving me what I want. Which is stalling and delaying. So, it would have worked out better for him if he tried to melee me. Since there's a hockey switch between range and melee attacking. So that's his own loss, that's his own fault for not taking advantage of that. And even then, I would only have one shooter boy squad, that wouldn't have been very effective. But, if I was somehow able to stall for storm boys, I was going to say maybe that would have gave me advantage, but I'm forgetting the Iron Maw team jumped from a drop pod, so it actually shows me the doctrines after a match, go figure. It won't show me it in the middle of a match, it shows me after. Because I was going to say, the kill team can drop from anywhere in the map. It's not just my shield generators or requisition points that I control. So, that would just put us on equal footing overall. So, what did he have? Yeah, he had the uh, Assault Leap, and he did not even build a single Assault Marine. That would have been amazing for him, I think. And then he has a Doctrine for his Dreadnoughts. Oh, uh, well... Underwhelming series of matches, but still complete stomps. So, I won't say no to that. Was there much to really learn from it, though? 
Well, it helped me practice splitting my orc boys a little bit so I can attack one angle and defend another, which is going to be pretty damn important for when that big patch hits, because I'm planning on diving straight into the annihilation mode. Thank you all for watching.